Uh, here is a smaller stakes uh, game here, NL50. And again, we're playing uh, mid, yeah, mid stake strategy, uh, hybrid strategy. So we got ace queen versus the jacks, and here you guys see it again, 55, 45, more or less split. Uh, this time we're on the short end of the stick. And we uh, raise it up to four times the big blind, the two bucks. Standard open raise, ace queen suited. You get one caller, and jacks only call, All right? So that's dangerous. And look at this. We hit top pair, top kicker, and the nut flush draw on that board. And the jacks check it. <laughs> so he flops his set. Very clever. Uh, he goes ahead and checks it, knowing that, you know, I, as an aggressive player, will probably bet this flop, you know, nine times in ten, uh, especially when I'm holding this. And, yeah, the only thing I'm worried about is a set of jacks or threes. <laughs> you know, and uh, the entire range that I give this guy are... Let's see. Yeah, jacks are better threes or twos. Um, you know, ace two suited stuff like that. Um, good. So he checks it, and I walk full on into it. Oh no, I check behind. Oh, that was tricky. And this guy. Let's see what happens. He goes ahead and pulls the trigger for us, and gives me a good spot for my check raise. So he in position, bet it. And that was actually what both of us were hoping for. <laughs> and then the jacks here uh, unexpectedly just calls. And that's a bit dangerous, especially on a two-suited board as this, because, of course, when any diamond comes, I win. Uh, and that gives me a good, good spot to check-raise. And in this case, it's a check-raise squeeze against this guy over here. All right, so I do that, and it's a bit light. Um, in the meaning of it's a bit too small uh, of a bet. You know, I should have popped that a bit more, but, you know, I don't have really anything to protect against, right, because I've got the nut flush draw here. So I'm just pot building at this point. So here we go. Back to the check raise um, for basically a little under half our stack. And, yeah, we're committed on every turn, but, yeah, here again, we're just pot building. And good. Let's see how this goes down. He lets it go, and this guy re-raises, min re-raises, and we get it all in with what we thought would have been a huge, huge equity advantage, you know. Um, against his entire range, again, we were at 58% equity. Uh, and, yeah, in reality, knowing his holding, we were only at 30%. Yeah, which is, you know, one time in three, we will take it down. So, turn comes, no help. Um, equity dropped to 18%. Right now, the queen, of course, doesn't help me, because the queen would make his full house. All right, the ace doesn't help me because he's still got a set of jacks, right? So what am I looking for? Yeah, <laughs> one of these diamonds, and she didn't come. So yeah, forty bucks out the window. Um, you know, with that hand, I'd say you know really good tricky play by this guy. Um, slight underdog pre-flop. We hit an amazing flop under most circumstances. Top pair, top kicker, plus the nut flush draw. That's just huge. Um, and ran into a set, uh, which we yeah, didn't necessarily expect. Really well well played by this guy. Um, I think it's a bit too risky with Jack's uh, pre-flop just to, just to cold call like that in most circumstances. Um, but yeah, that's how it went down. Now we've got ace-queen over here versus the nine-jack. All right, uh, and he opened limps with a nine-jack suited. Uh, Decent, decent speculative hand. He's playing a big stack strategy. You know, that's that's definitely doable. A lot of people see that and freak out. That's actually a decent move here, middle late position. Um, I tend to raise that, but yeah, if you're on a passive table, relatively passive table, and people let you get away with limping like that, why not? Um, so he just limps open, and I go ahead and isolate from the big blind five times uh, his limp, right, four times the big blind plus one per caller kind of textbook isolation raise and his pot odds are 1.75 to 1 so he needs 36 percent to make that call and if he were going all in he would be making one percent <laughs> approaching infinity right the difference between that and yeah of course we're not going all in but we're going to see a flop here so he just calls for yeah speculative volume and flop comes two jack three two suited so he flops top pair, but I've got, again, one of these monster draws, and I want you guys to see this. I, for all intents and purposes, have not hit that flop. 
didn't hit a queen, didn't hit an ace. But in this case, any queen, any ace, and any heart make my hand. So that's 15 full outs, nine for the nine for the flush, plus six um, for these over cards. So three aces, three queens, nine hearts, total of 15 outs on this board. Even though I didn't hit it per se. I'm actually a favorite with my draw alone. I'm a 55% favorite with this hand on this board versus it, pretty much any jack without a heart. And yeah, okay, not two pair of course uh, or trips, but as you guys see here, I'm a 55% favorite with my draw alone. So I go ahead and make my C bet, I'm sure. I'm <laughs> very strong this time. And this guy decides to min raise me with a nine jack. So this doesn't speak for good play. Open limp call, uh, nine jack, and here he's min raising with the the bear jack on this board, and yeah, I go ahead and get it in as a 55% favorite. Total pot 4240. So basically, 0.55 times the pot is what I expect to take down in the long run. Let's see what happens. No dice. So you guys see here the rake's a bit less because we didn't clear the $60, $60 mark. All right. Let's call variance. Queens. We raise it up three and a half times a big blind in a 100 scenario playing a hybrid or mid-stack strategy. 98 cold calls, another cold caller. And look at this again. Another 49 to 1 flop. I've got my over pair. Bet it out. And we get it all in. And I unfortunately... Yeah, I got sucked out on that hand, and it would have been right here at 27% is when it all goes in. Um, but again, guys, when you look at this total range over here, we've got uh, queens versus the 98 suited. You know, I put him on this range here, which continues on, and with that, even there, we're at 64% um, equity versus his entire range. Again, we can't know that he's got this holding um, that he cold call with the 98 suited, you know, and then flops a miracle. 49 to 1, it happens, guys. That's an aspect of variance as well. And yeah, so again, we bet, we actually overbet uh, that pot this time. And he goes ahead and pushes, pushes us all in. So he puts us all in. And we gladly call that, <laughs> and then he turns over 98, and we're thinking, oh, man, hard luck. Good thing that we adhere to bankroll management, so it doesn't sting. <laughs> of course, it stings a bit, always it will, um, but it doesn't break us. And that's the idea of bankroll management. All right, here, just uh, an example of a bad matchup. We've got queens on the button, playing a hybrid strategy again here in a 100, and we run into kings uh, in late positions, so... Anybody raising here from late position as a steal can have a super wide range, and we're just killing that with our queens. So that's the idea here of, um, you know, he wins the hand as an 82% favorite, as he mathematically should. Um, we don't take down our one time in five hit, and um, yeah, this is an example of a bad matchup, so called bad matchup or cooler. And so he raises it, we re raise it. This is a so-called re-steal from the button. He makes an open raise from cutoff. We re-raise it to eight. It's a bit too too little, but again, we've got queens. <laughs> and so he, he two bets it. We three bet it. He four bets all in, and we gladly call with our queens on the button. And <laughs> then our smile turns into a frown when we see him turn over kings. But that's a good play. Um, again, approaching infinity. You'll be making a lot of money with that move. Let's see, what was the range we gave him on that? Kings versus queens. We gave him tens, ace, ace queen suited, or ace king for the four bet. And, yeah. Again, oh, sorry. The, okay, 66% favorite versus that total range here. Uh, next hand is very similar. Uh, similar range we've given, and you guys see this here, so I won't uh, have to go back to that, but... Again, versus those ranges, we're here at 66, 66, 55 percent, and 90 percent equity versus his estimated entire range of hands. So the average 
all in equity versus our villains ranges was 65 percent and that means in the long run as mentioned in the first video um, given that these ranges are correct uh, that we should have increased our bankroll by about 30 percent and in reality what happened is we lost a grand so the total swing was yeah look at it however you like if you think you should have you know won all these uh, then the total swing is going to be two thousand uh, if you think you should have won maybe a third of it, then your total swing is in 30, 1352. Um, pretty tough, right? You lose a grand when you should have actually increased by 30, what, 30, 35 percent here, and that's yeah, that's how it goes down, guys. That's poker. That's what you need to be ready for, and that's exactly why you should and actually must adhere to bankroll management if you're going to be a winning player in the long term. So good uh, example of a bad matchup. Here again, we've got now kings versus aces. Uh, another, he's not stealing here because I'm in the cutoff, but he's making an open raise from very a middle late position, and of course with kings you're ahead of pretty much any range here. It's the only hand that's ahead of you is here. He raises it to three as a steal. Make a standard three bet here. Uh, again, not as a steal, but close enough. <laughs> late position raise. So um, this is actually quite textbook. For the bet sizes, um, let's go ahead and look at that. Okay, aces raise it up, middle late position, open raise to three times the big blind. We make a three bet. This is a two bet. It's a three bet, three times the open raise. Also very standard. And the reason for that, of course, is that we're giving this guy 2.5 to one odds, and he needs 31% equity to break even in the long run. So he doesn't just call it with his aces, of course, he re-raises, and it's also very standard, uh, basically three times my three bet. And again, you see here, I'm getting now two to one odds. <laughs> so I need 33% all of a sudden to make, if I were to call all in. But at this point, I'm thinking, okay, hopefully he's on any kind of ace, king, uh, queens, jacks, or tens, and... I uh, put my money on that one, and unfortunately, he turns over aces. There it is. Uh, again, you know, two seventeen thirty in the pot. Uh, we should win, you know, one time in what six here. And yeah, it didn't happen. That means you know we're not dead here, right? We are going to win that eighteen percent in the long run. And yeah, basically the reverse of all the different uh, hands that we've seen so far. So yeah, we've got again this standard. 80-20 split over pair under pair also with aces versus kings and we actually both flop sets it's highly unlikely no help to the river and that's how it went down again an example of a bad matchup here we've got tens versus ace king suited again this time we're stealing so we make an open raise in l50 he re-raises we push and we get it all in with 54 percent equity King's flop. Look at this, guys, by the way. This one's really sick. He flops it. He flops trips here, which is, again, 73 to 1. Uh, and we flop the full house. <laughs> so even just flopping the, the 10 here is going to be 7.5 to 1. Um, basically, three of a kind or better. And um, around 11% of the time, and, you know, his 73 to 1 is just sick here. And look at this flop. 23% equity he has right here. Here's the two on the turn. He drops down to 16%. So basically only a king or an ace, okay, or two at this point, help him. And what does he hit? The four of a kind on the river. Yeah, pretty uh, pretty tough to look at. You know, you get it in pre-flop as a 54% favorite. Uh, on the turn, you're already up to 84%. And yeah. The river can be nasty, friends. Yeah, that's poker, that's variance. Uh, again, this time, I believe this is our last hand. Okay. Yeah, this is what I wrote here. Uh, big stack strategy, so called double suck out. <laughs> uh, and I wanted to end it uh, in the video on this one because it is so sick. Uh, so I've got queens here under the gun. Raise it up, uh, standard, standard raise size, you know, three or four times a big blind, whatever you're playing. And the aces do something uh, very tricky, also something very dangerous, and they only call. That means that anybody here with another pair um, 
can and probably should in this case overcall uh, for set value as we had seen so many times where you know you assume one of these guys are on big pairs you call with your low and middle pair for set value if you hit that third uh, third card on the flop then you play on if not you let it go now they're just huge implied odds when you do flop that set versus early position raises so that's why it's a bit yeah something you generally want to avoid when you're playing aces if you don't have really good reads uh, on your table all right and action continues fold 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 everybody's out and look at this in this case we suck out on this guy so we actually flopped the set even with this huge pair right we flopped top set here on a two suited board so I actually make a pretty hefty bet here about three-fourths pot and yeah this guy with aces is of course licking his chops and hoping that I'm on any ace king or you know king queen something like that and let's see how he plays this he does raise it and that's a min raise guys so I bet seven he min raises it so basically just uh, two times my bet and I'm thinking okay excellent uh, I've got at this point the absolute nuts and re-raise it also very small so I, I re-min raise him <laughs> and uh, he decides at that point okay let's stop fooling around and get it in there uh, re-raises me and of course I gladly call as an 86 percent favorite so pre-flop he's 80 percent ahead as is almost always the case yeah 82 18 whatever um, on the flop I hit my set and all of a sudden I'm an 86 percent favorite alright here's a turn king so now that did help him a bit um, he's right here at 14 percent and he stays at 14 percent with the king because he's got the two aces and now also of course uh, four tens and let's see what comes imagine that guys ace on the river uh, we're an 86 percent favorite coming into the coming into the river itself on the turn and the infamous ace on the river uh, does come and we ended up losing you know 143.90 uh, pot in a in a 100 game where we're playing a mid stack strategy and yeah wanted to end it with that one uh, as a double suck out it's both a bad matchup <laughs> then I suck out on the on the flop hit my top set get it all in as an 86 percent favorite and the river uh, is our variance card so to say so I hope that's clear guys um, again the coming videos will will uh, explain in, in much greater detail exactly what position is uh, betting strategies this kind of stuff and um, for now I think if you had just paid attention here to the pot you know how the pot odds are changing for the respective players as they either bet or folded um, yeah you see the equity swings here you know what you can expect these were real money hands um, where again we were on average a 65 percent favorite uh, versus our opponents ranges and instead of increasing our total bankroll here by uh, okay that wasn't the total bankroll but instead of increasing um, our risk capital let's say it like that to 1352 as it should have been uh, we ended up dropping uh, a grand due to variance that's about all I wanted to show you guys here for bankroll management um, I think that really brings home the point that variance is ever-present that it's something that you definitely have to deal with and the only way to fight against it even when you're playing perfectly is to adhere to bankroll management it means always have at least I would say at least 20 buy-ins uh, in your total allotted risk capital or bankroll for whatever level you're playing and again see the previous video uh, go to our website to get those downloads um, for bankroll management and especially also for um, managing your uh, wins over time as always guys if you have any questions please feel free to give me a call um, or drop me a line via the contact form at any time my name's Dylan hope you enjoyed it and I'm looking forward to working with you here in the coming videos where we'll go into much greater detail on equity expected value uh, position stats and optimal stats especially for Texas Hold'em 
but all of these principles definitely do pertain to 7 stud, uh, Omaha, and the like. Till next time, all the best, and best of luck at the tables.